Okay, so once you've blocked your swatch, now you want to make sure it's completely dry. And sometimes that means leaving it for another day or a few more days before you decide you're going to measure the stitch and row gauge. Once it's completely dry, this is what I do, and you won't believe this. I go like this, 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 this. I really manhandle my swatch, and sometimes I even carry it around with me in my knitting bag and do that several times over the course of several days because anything that you're going to knit from this is going to be stretched and pulled in the course of its usual wear. Even if it's a pillow, a sock, a garment, a scarf, a hat, anything is going to be manipulated. It's not going to sit perfectly still like this. You need to allow it to be the way it wants to be once it's been manipulated. Then I measure gauge, and this is how I measure the gauge. I don't choose a four inch spot in the middle. I want to measure as wide of an area as possible. So let's see, let's put the bind off at the top. And then I don't count the selvage stitch and I don't count the first column in, but I put my pin between the second to last column and the column to the right of it. And I just put my pin between the columns of stitches I do the same on this edge. I don't count the selvage or the first column in because sometimes those stitches don't necessarily represent the true size of your stitches. So now I've got as much area as I can between the pins. I measure this area and I'm getting 5 and 3 eighths, so that would be 5.375. I count the stitches in between and then I divide the stitches by the measurement. I do the same thing for the row gauge. So I would put a pin under a stitch near the top. And in this case, you don't have to worry about the top and bottom being distorted. And then in the same column, I put a pin near the bottom, under the stitch, under the stitch. And then I measure the distance between the pins and I count the rows between the pins. I don't count the row that the pin is going through. You'll find that you get a much more accurate gauge this way. And I challenge you to try this. Try just measuring four inches in the middle. And then try the method that I'm showing here, where you're going to measure out to the edge, excluding the two stitches nearest the edge on each side and compare the gauge you get because what happens is if you just measure four inches rather than measuring the stitches, if you measure four inches in here, and let's zoom in, the four inches may or may not include a whole stitch. So we can see, let's look here, so I'm marking from the beginning of a stitch right here over to the four which is right here, which is, it's not between two stitches. So it looks like we would have three-fourths of a stitch there. If you counted that whole stitch as part of the four inches, it's going to throw you off in all your measurements. Whereas if you measure, if you measure between the stitches, so there are no partial stitches, and I realize this involves a little more math, but it'll give you much more accurate gauge. So between the four stitches, measure. You have your number of stitches here. I think this is going to be about 26 stitches and we get a measurement of 5 and 3 eighths so that's 5.375 so we would divide 26 by 5.375 and that would give me my number of stitches per inch and it may be a partial count like it might be uh, 4.75 stitches to the inch or 5.1 stitches to the inch do not round that number. Just multiply by four to get your um, stitches over four inches, then round that number. Round it down if it's less than 0.5 or up if it's more than 0.5. If it's 0.5, you can choose down or up. So if I get 
21.5. I could say it's 21 stitches or 22. If I get 20.4, then it's 20 stitches. This will give you a much more accurate measurement. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and tell me if this is something that you think will help you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is in association with a pillow that I have up on Ravelry called Colam. And you'll find the playlist for that video up in this corner. And come back and watch more. Happy knitting. Thanks for watching my video.